Hey, what's going on? It's Joey Myers from the Hitting Performance Lab. And in this video, we are doing a Mookie Bet swing analysis. And in collateral damage, we're also going to look at Trey Turner in this swing analysis. We're going to compare and contrast two smaller guys. And before we get started, we are going to look at, just want to give you a rundown of what this video is going to be about. We're going to give you a rundown where we're at here on Fangraphs, just the size of these hitters and a couple statistics. Then we're going to go into some catapult loading system principles and seeing what both hitters, Mookie Betts and Trey Turner, both have in common in the swing analysis. And then we're going to look at some pitch plane domination principles and see what these two hitters have in common. So let's first get going in the giving context to these hitters. Now, this is Mookie Betts. This is on fan graphs. As you can see, he's 5'9", 180 pounds. And he's been pretty consistent with his numbers the last few years. I think he's dropped off just a tad this year, maybe last year, but he ended up doing pretty well. You can see here he's got 40 doubles, he's got 29 homers. What's also interesting is if you look at his walk total, which is 97, and his strikeout total, which is 101, almost a one-to-one -one ratio. That is almost unheard of in this game with a 295 average. You can see here in his ground ball line drive and fly ball makeup, you got 24.8% line drive rate, which is above average. It's about four, almost 5% above average. Ground ball percentage is well below average. You, uh, typically it's 43% or 44% is the league average. He's 31.5. Fly ball percentage typically is a little higher than average, which tends to be around 37%. He's at 43.8. And his home run to fly ball ratio is at 13.1, which is above average. I think the league average is around 9%. So not too bad. So let's take a look at Mr. Trey Turner. Here's Trey Turner. And you can see they're about the same age too, about 26, 27 years old. Trey Turner's a little taller, but about the same weight, 6'2", 185. You can see similar numbers here, 37 doubles, whereas Mookie Betts hit 40. You got a little bit more triples here. You have 19 homers. So he's hit about half as many homers as Mookie Betts. And you have a 298 average, similar batting averages, strikeouts, a little bit similar. You got 113, a little bit more than Mookie Betts. And he's got 43 walks, so that's more of a almost a three to one or a two to one, but still 113 strikeouts, not too bad. Let's take a look at some of the line drive, fly ball, ground ball ratios. You can see right here, line drive percentage in 2019, he's at 20%, which is pretty much league average. Ground ball rate, he's actually a little bit above average. 47.2, 44 is the league average. You have fly ball percentage is below average, typically is 37%. And you have the home run to fly ball ratio, actually is pretty good, 14.2, league average is 9%. So it's a little bit better than Mookie Betts. Maybe there could be some tweaking, there could be some things going on that's causing him to hit more ground balls than fly balls, but Trey Turner's pretty fast. Maybe that's something that the coaches are encouraging him to do is put it on the ground like a lot of coaches out there especially in high school so that he can lay out hits so let's take a look at the the swing analysis now of Mookie Betts and Trey Turner all right here we go obviously Mookie Betts over here on the left this swing or these this, this is a game he went four for five with two homers in the games beginning of September 2019 and this Trey Turner video is a home run he hit towards the end of September I think maybe getting close to the playoffs there and we're going to take a look. I know the this video over here didn't show any far away views, so we can't really pound for pound, same, same. But we can get a close-up here, Mookie Betts at least, but you can pretty much make out what Trey Turner's doing too. So catapult loading system principle, showing numbers, down angle, hiding hands, front arm shape, things like that. And the stable head, hollow position with the low, the low back. Let's take a look at Mookie Betts real quick. So, and a little context on this pitch. I think this pitch was a fastball. It didn't say what the speed was on this one because this wasn't the actual live interview. I think it was a later one. It doesn't say the speed on that either. That's popping up there. Uh, but I, I would think fastball, middle in, even a third of the plate inside. You can see he's not quite getting it on the sweet spot. Definitely, obviously a home run here. But he's not optimizing where this ball's hitting on the bat. He's not... He's not hitting on the center percussion, but gets it done nonetheless. But what you're seeing before this happens is you're seeing this, what I call the beach towel effect where we're trying to wring the towel out. So we want the head to anchor, create an anchor point. So it's a tracking anchor point. Head will stay in this position 
while the shoulders, as you can see that 5.0 there, but before that even happens, if we back this up, you can see here you can make out the five, not so much of the zero. And then what his head will do is will stay anchored in the tracking position. That is the top hand of the ringing towel. The shoulders will be the bottom hand of the ringing towel. There's actually three hands. There's the head, which controls the C-spine, the seven vertebrae there. Then you got the shoulders, which kind of controls the T-spine, which is 12 vertebrae there. And then you got the hips or the pelvis control the L part of the spine, the lumbar part of the spine, which are five vertebrae there. So we're talking about the top two at up until stride landing and controlling that part of it. And that's how we're using that ringing towel analogy at the upper half part of the body. The lower half, we don't tend to focus on as much or create much of a priority that much. And as you see in this Mookie Betts swing analysis, you'll see that he kind of keeps his, this, his pelvis in neutral. He doesn't really inward rotate the pelvis. And you'll see the actual, the pelvis start to open even almost before the foot hits the ground. You can see the toes barely, he's not weighting anything with the front foot, but you can see that pinstripe right here as it goes up into the belt loop. You can see the pinstripe starting to open already. But what he's doing is he's keeping this tension up here. And as this opens down here, the pelvis, it will create the tension we're creating up here, kind of more manufacturing this tension. It will create it naturally down here as the pelvis starts to open and the shoulders are closed, which is the bottom hand and the middle hand of the three hands ringing the towel out. The bottom hand will start to, to turn while the top hand's already turned. So we're, we're creating the tension on the bottom half now between the T and the L part of the spine. So early on, it's the C up here, the neck, the cervical, and the T, the thoracic part of the spine that's kind of creating the tension at the beginning. We don't have to turn and probably shouldn't be turning the pelvis inward because then what's happening is now we're chasing, the pelvis is chasing the shoulders the same direction and we're not wringing the towel out on the bottom. So what I say is keep the pelvis in neutral or keep the belt buckle pointing at the plate, being per perpendicular to the plate. And we want to make sure, almost like a you have a rod that's going through both hip bones towards the pitcher that is parallel, running parallel to the plate. It's almost like we want the hitter to slide along that rod with the hip bones. We don't want to turn them in because that'll break the rod. We don't want to turn them out until about this point here as you see Mookie Betts doing in this swing analysis. So you can see him showing his numbers, creating tension up top, head is an anchor point, shoulders moving underneath the chin as far as it can to where he will be feeling pressure, and I'm almost guaranteed he's feeling pressure in that, what, C7, T1 spot where, where the T and the C combine. He's feeling some pressure in there, which is where we got that, that beach towel is optimally wrung out showing numbers he's got the down shoulder angle you'll see here and from another view we'll see that too got the head at the anger point he's got he's not really hiding the hands as much until about right here he's kind of a, a late hand hider but you can see pretty good there now let's look at trey turner over here and compare and contrast you can't really see his number here but what you're going to see is similar principles acting on his swing as well you can see really good and the one thing i didn't look at was Mookie Betts has more of a neutral spine here. He's not really going into what we call the hollow position with the low back where we're, we're posterior pelvic tilt, where if the pelvis is a bowl of water, we're spilling water on the heels. But you'll see Trey, Trey Turner actually do this. You can see it right here, a little bit more of a rounded lower back than Mookie Betts does. And that's more of a, it's not so much a power thing, it's more of a safe lower back thing. So when the pelvis, a lot of the torsion injuries in the low back happen when you get some sort of an extension and lordosis is just kind of a neutral, neutral spine and then a twist. So you get like an extension of the lower back and then a twist at the same time or consecutively is usually where you see torsional injuries, at least according to Dr. Serge Grakovetsky in the spinal engine. So what we, we can do to make that spine healthy, that lower back uh, healthy during the rotation or safe during the rotational process on the lower half 
is to take the curve out of the lower back and go into what's called an, a hollow position. They use this a lot in gymnastics. If you put in hollow position on YouTube or put in hollow hold is an exercise that you can have your hitters do to help to reinforce this. It's generally the lower abdominal, the psoas, that is clamping down, kind of bringing the rib cage down and taking the curve out of the lower back and creating a very safe environment for that lower back while the lower half starts to rotate. So you can see Turner's a little bit better there than, than Betts. Betts is more neutral, more lower doses. So you can see Turner has a little bit more rounded, kind of like a Josh Donaldson style. But you can see now, clear as day, the seven. You can see that seven doing the same thing with his head. He's anchoring down with his head. His shoulders are moving underneath his chin and down, front shoulders moving in and down. We're getting this downward shoulder angle. Again, we'll watch it from the chest view so you'll get a better view of this. Um, but you can see the same thing. And this doesn't matter whether the pitcher's throwing hard in, whether they're throwing away, whether it doesn't matter what the pitch is or the depth. You're, you'll see these hitters that, that use catapult loading system principles, they do this all the time. It is not discriminatory based on inside versus middle versus away. You'll see them do it all the time. It's not a, well, the pitch is inside and it's 96 miles an hour. I'm not going to show my numbers as much. That doesn't happen. These guys do it all the time. It's not something that you can you can decide in 0.4 seconds or 0.3 seconds on whether you want to show your numbers or not based on pitch depth. It just doesn't happen that way. So you see both hitters doing from this view, anchor point at the top, bringing the towel out with the head creating the anchor point, shoulders passing underneath. You can see the seven now where you couldn't see it before. And you're seeing the downward shoulder angles. Turner is hiding his hands, which is some call a scap load. You can see this elbow peeking out back here. Same with Mookie Betts. You can see that elbow peeking out behind him. And this is these are great positions to be in pre-stride. This is where the, the body moves the barrel, not the barrel moving the body. It's such a rotten, to do it the opposite is such a rotten statement and a rotten cue that causes a lot of lower back explosions. And what I've what I've put a lot of time and effort in to try and change and seeing a lot of those kind of swings out there. So let's take a look at the chest view and see how you how these principles show up and then we'll move into the pitch plane domination and the barrel path principles. Okay, before we get to the barrel path, I wanted to show you before we look at this chest view over here, you got to see Trey Turner and the swing analysis. Let's look at Mookie Betts on the second home run. So the first one I was talking about that the showing numbers happens regardless it's irrelevant where the pitch depth is or the pitch type or the pitch speed is. The, these hitters that are encouraging doing the catapult loading system principles will do it all the time. It doesn't matter with the other variables when they change. So this pitch, the first one was fastball. Don't know what the speed is again because I didn't say it on this video. But this one is a slider that starts inside and slides across. You can see where the catcher's glove is set up on the outer third part of the plate or middle away. And you can see he's out in front on this a little bit, caught out in front. But you're seeing him show his numbers. Foot touches down there, he's showing his numbers. Pelvis again is starting to open and we're starting to wring the towel out between the T, the thoracic spine, and the L, the lumbar part of the spine. We're starting to wring it out down here. So we've taken the slack out of the system down here. The top part of the ringing towel, the slack has been taken out at the top of the spine by the head anchoring, showing the numbers. And even though that this is a slider that's moving away from him, he's out in front, he still shows his numbers and does all the principles that we, we've been talking about in this video so far. Now let's move to the chest view of both hitters. All right, here we go. Now this swing over here is of the second home run, I believe, and is the one where he's a little bit more out in front. Mookie Betts over here on the left. Uh, both hitters are actually a little bit out in front, so these are, these are some good swings to look at, and we can see what happens uh, or what doesn't happen when a hitter's out in front. So if we're looking at the catapult loading system principles, the biggest one that we can see from this view is the downward shoulder angle. So this idea that the front shoulder is down, this is a side bend or what we call head over foot technique. As somebody, as we walk as humans, locomotion, bipeds, what we see is we see a side bend, the head will bend over or you will side bend, moving the head over the new landing foot. In normal moving human beings, 
that don't have any mobility restrictions or stability restrictions, we will see this. And so this is simi similar of what we're doing here, but moving sideways is this little bit of a side bend. Now we don't wanna move the head way over this front foot, but we're gonna get somewhat of a side bend as we're moving and not committing our weight until we've gotten a good read of the ball. But we're gonna see somewhat of a side bend, meaning downward shoulder angle. You can see over your same Trey Turner, I've seen this a little bit more recently with him the last couple years, is he's really gotten this kind of side bended and he's a little bit more than Betts. As you can see, his head's a little bit more, maybe it's a camera view, is different. But you're gonna see his head is actually a little bit more over his, towards his front side than, than Mookie Betts. But you're still getting that same side bend type of position all the way to landing. You can see with the front arm shapes, both players aren't straight but aren't super bent either. They're probably, it might be 120, 130 degrees, something like that. Both hitters pretty similar as they start their swings and they maintain, the other important thing is they maintain the shape of that arm as they're getting to the ball, even though they're out in front here. And now this Trey Turner one, he since he's out in front quite a bit, you're seeing him really extend at impact this front arm shape where he's gonna maximize and optimize the distance of this batted ball. Mookie Betts kind of similar. You're gonna see him maintain the shape of that arm that angle's not going to change much maybe a little bit in this zone here again this was the slider he was a little bit out in front but at impact you're seeing him get really close to straight still bent but really close to straight so he's going to maximize his batter ball distance and optim op op maximize and optimize his batter ball distance this way so those are the catapult loading system principles let's take a look at a couple uh, I just want to look at barrel path here on pitch plane domination. So remember this Trey Turner, this Trey Turner pitch was, this was a submariner, middle in, you can see the catcher's glove. So typically middle in, although he's out in the front on this, typically middle in, you'll see the barrel will, what we call cut the corner or hit the belly button catcher's glove, and I'll explain that in a second. But just want to give you context of where the location of this pitch is, because elite hitters, the real high level pattern, will change depending on pitch depth. And we will take a look at this Trey Turner, where, where his barrel, what catcher's glove he ends up hitting, where his barrel enters the zone, and we'll compare that to Mookie Betts. Let's start with Mookie Betts first in this swing analysis on where the barrel path is gonna be. Remember, this was the slider. This was the, is located middle away or outer third part of the plate. It started in, kind of moved away. And as you've seen a little bit more, he's out in front. But what we talk about are these different catcher's gloves. So the hitter, we back him up a little bit. So imagine a catcher's glove in line with the belly button, one in line with the back foot, and then one in line with the regular catcher's glove, which is a little farther back but for you so you could see his his whole body in this one same over here belly button back foot and you can see this catcher is right off trey turner's back foot typically if they're throwing away you'll see the catcher back up a little bit or else there's going to be a lot of catchers interference so maybe they were targeting him in maybe maybe not but you can see that catcher sitting right there he wouldn't be sitting there if they were targeting him middle away but what you're going to see let's look at mookie betts first so this pitch again slid away from him, it was sliding away. It was a slider starting in. So you can see the catcher's glove he's actually hitting is the back foot catcher's glove, which is middle middle. Typically to optimize and maximize when the barrel hits the zone, hits the like the attack zone, away, middle away, or the outer third, you wanna hit the real catcher's glove. But because this was a slider, he was a little bit tighter with his arc. Maybe he saw a fastball at first and then kind of cut the corner a little bit in order uh, to get there, was kind of did a meeting point, right? He was kind of maybe looking here, belly button, saw that it started sliding away, couldn't, couldn't get quite here. Uh, again, these aren't, mid, th these aren't brain decisions that he's making. These are reactions to what the pitch is doing. So he's not, this isn't going through his brain being computed and then, hey, I need to do this, that, and the other thing. It's just that the slider started in. He started probably in this type of zone, saw that it started sliding away and ended up kicking the barrel out a little bit sooner. More of a, not a deep barrel dump, but kind of in the middle of a deep barrel dump and being tighter and more compact with the turn. So you see him kind of with the middle, middle of the road approach, a barrel path approach here. And he ends up, you can see he's not hitting it right on the sweet spot, which if he did the real catcher's glove, hit the real catcher's glove, 
he probably would have got this ball right on the sweet spot and drilled this ball a lot harder. But you can see a difference here. He's out in front on this slider and he's more middle of the road. If you look at Trey Turner over here, you can see he's out in front for sure. So this is more of he's kind of saving the swing a little bit, but this is a prototypical inner third, middle in approach on a ball, say 96, 97 in. And a lot of people out there don't like this, this stiff front arm. And this is one of the, the reasons why we can take a stiff front arm and we can hit a ball 96 in or even in the upper part of the zone and we can mash it because we want to have like basically the bad cues to swing down, get on top of the ball, barrel above the hands. This is what Trey Turner's doing here to cut the corner and be compact. He is not deep barrel dumping here. And there's nothing wrong with the deep barrel dump as long as we're hitting a pitch that's down in the zone or away in the zone. Farther away from the hitter the ball is, the deep barrel dump is, is fine and okay. But the closer to the, the body the ball is, the pitch is, if it's in or if it's up, the more you have to cut the corner, be more compact with the swing. So with Trey Turner, this is a prototypical inner third, inner half type of swing or upper upper third or upper half part of the zone that we want our hitters to maintain. We want to hit the belly button catcher's glove in order to get there. That helps us to turn that corner. It is not gonna happen if he deep barrel dumps back here. One, he's gonna blow the catcher's glove up. But also, too, it's going to take forever to get that barrel to gump come from back here to out in front over here to get to that ball. The barrel, here's the, here's the important thing. So whatever catcher's glove we're hitting, if it's the belly button one, that's going to be on inner third. The inner third pitch, a hitter is going to hit out in front of the, the stride foot. So the distance between the belly button catcher's glove when the barrel hit, hit enters the zone and where we make contact with an inner third pitch is going to be the same. The barrel is going to travel the same distance as if it was a middle middle pitch and his barrel entered the zone at his back foot and hit the ball, made contact in line with his stride foot would be a typical middle middle contact zone. That distance of barrel travels is the same. It just staggers back a little bit from the inner third approach. The same thing is true barrel distance wise. If the ball is outer third part of the plate or lower third part of the zone and he hit deep barrel dumps, hits the real catcher's glove back here, but then makes contact behind the stride foot. The distance the barrel has to travel is the same. There was another video that somebody put up on Twitter the other day, and it was a swing like this. It wasn't an out in front swing, but it was a it was a middle in swing or a, an inner third swing. And the the person was saying, "Look at you know that that swing is too short. They couldn't do that on other pitches and blah blah blah." But it, they're not getting the point that the barrel, the distance the barrel travels will be the same it's just the when the barrel enters the zone and the contact point will stagger forward or back depending on the pitch depth this is what the best do it isn't because of the front arm shape if the front arm is locked out getting to the ball that's making the swing long it's when the barrel enters the zone and the problem with younger hitters is that they tend to not be strong enough yet unless you do a lot of overload training in loaded overload bats that are really really good to work this and it takes time it doesn't just happen like a light switch but to get them able to manipulate the barrel in a way that if the ball is middle in or middle up in the zone that they can do this like what Trey Turner's doing with the barrel he's using those bad cues swing down get on top barrel above your hands in order to get there that's how we cut the swing down and get more compact with it the younger hitters tend to bat drag and they release the barrel too early all the time so if the ball's in the ball's up they're releasing it way back here they're beat deep barrel dumping and they're casting the barrel out the the casting barrel makes a long swing long it's not the front arm shape that makes a swing long it's when the barrel enters the zone and we can't enter the zone deep on every pitch especially 96 in or 96 up it has to enter later in the process in the attack zone so the difference between the two hitters, not a lot of difference between them. Two small guys. You got Mookie Betts over here at 5'9", 180 pounds. Trey Turner at 6'2", 185 pounds. Both exhibiting very, very well the catapult loading system principles and even on the barrel pass side of pitch plane domination. Two of my favorite hitters to watch and 
Trey Turner recently talked about, I guess he broke his index finger, hurt it or strained it or something on his top hand and he, he was talking about finger pressure. So top hand, bottom three fingers, squeezing hard, eight out of 10 from the minute you start your turn to all the way through into your finish, beautiful stuff. Make sure that you're swinging smarter by moving better and before I let you go. The Hitting Performance Lab wants to know, did you know repeatable hitting power does not start in the hips? Have you heard the expressions, load and explode the hips, power comes from the hips? Well, we created a free video revealing the results of a scientific study that will show you how we added 48 feet of batted ball distance instantly. And it's not all about the hips. Click here now to get the video while it's still free.